Lorenzo Bezzi from the Nanoscience Laboratory and uh, today together with my colleagues Professor Stefano Anzini, Professor Paolo Bertotti and Professor Marina Scarpa we would like to introduce you to the nanophotonics area. So the nanophotonics area is uh, a, a topic that is uh, about the research that we are performing within the nanoscience lab. So the Nanoscience Laboratory has a series of uh, people and uh, we have uh, professors and uh, researchers and uh, researcher assistants as well as we have technical staff, we have uh, uh, postdocs, we have PhD students and a few master thesis students that nowadays are doing their uh, thesis with us. So the area of specialization in nanophotonics covered from the research point of view, essentially two main teams. So the first one is nanophotonics, and the second one is nanomaterial for photonics. Here in the nanophotonics part, we cover on one side neuromorphic photonics, and on the other side quantum photonics. And uh, now I leave the floor to Professor Paolo Bettotti, who will introduce you about uh, what uh, uh, is uh, neuromorphic photonics and, more importantly, what is photonics. Then, Professor Stefano Zilli will tell you about quantum photonics. Photonic is the art of generating, routing, and detecting light. Photonics is nowadays a pervasive technology, particularly for telecommunication application, as it is the only platform able to support the ever-growing bandwidth demand of Internet and Internet of Things. Yet, photonics finds widespread application in many other fields, from industrial to medical and sensing uses, for example. Photons own several captivating aspects to become the new computational paradigm. In fact, photons enable computing at much faster speed than electronics. While the CPU working frequencies are stuck at few gigahertz from since several years, photonics easily runs at tens or even hundreds of gigahertz. Furthermore, photonics permit truly parallel computation since photons do not interact with each other unless we force them to do it. A classic example is the case of a lens that performs Fourier transforms at the speed of light. And finally, photonics is more energy efficient than electronics. So, for example, consider that every year the data centers consume between 1 and 2% of the energy that is produced uh, worldwide. So, at the Nanoscience Laboratory, we are working with the physics of complex photonic integrated circuits. And we develop devices to be used in real case scenarios. Photonics can substitute electronics in high-speed digital application, and this is the first application and the first use of photonics, but its full potential will be exploited only when a uh, uh, photonic circuit will be designed to perform much more complex uh, logical operation than the uh, simple binary. Recently, we have been stimulated by the advancement in the field of neural networks and machine learning, and we start a new research project where photonics interact with biological neuronal culture, so with, with real biological sample, with the twofold objective of, on one side, to understand the evolutionary process of neural cultures and to exploit stimulus strategies to develop photonic integrated circuits with optimized topology and able to perform complex logical tasks. That means from signal correction in telecom application or a real-time image or speech recognition. And on the other hand, since the possibility given by optogenetics, that is the biochemical technique that permits to control the cell activity with light stimuli, we, use, we want to use light path to design the neuronal connection and to control the neuronal activity of the cell cultures. So at the Nanoscience Lab, we exploit the possibilities given by photonics in two main research lines. The first one is to understand, to model, to design and to characterize photonic integrated circuits with the long-term goal of developing optical computers. And on the other hand, we want to use uh, photonics and optogenetics 
to condition both the structures and the functionalities of neural cultures. In this case, the long-term vision is uh, to develop systems able to interact with and eventually to support damaged biological tissues. Hello, my name is Stefano Azzini. I teach photonics at the Master in Physics at the University of Trento. And in this five minute video, I want to introduce you to the research in integrated quantum nanophotonics that we carry out within the nanoscience laboratory. Light is electromagnetic radiation and as such is made up of quanta of energy called photons. Photons obey to the laws of quantum mechanics and as quantum particles can be described by a wave function whose physical meaning is that of providing us with the probability distribution of finding a photon in a certain position and at a certain time. If you consider a single photon in front of a double slit assembly, it can take either path A or path B, so that its quantum state is in a superposition of the quantum states with only slit A or B open. By placing a screen capable of detecting single photons, an interference pattern is observed by collecting one by one photons which, one after the other, pass through the double slit. Now, such interference can only happen because of quantum superposition and indistinguishability of paths A and B. Indeed, if we were to perform any kind of measurement to know which path the photon took, the interference pattern would be lost because of the coherence. This is the essence of quantum interference, which can be exploited, for example, in the following way. By mapping paths A and B to a bit of information, say respectively 1 and 0, a so-called quantum bit or qubit is created, which, being in a superposition state of 0 and 1, can carry intrinsically more information than what a classical bit can do, and has therefore the potential to greatly speed up quantum com computation with respect to classical computation. This is a paradigmatic example of the fundamental aspects of photons that we want to exploit in our research, which is focused on developing integrated quantum nanophotonic circuits. Integrated quantum nanophotonic science and technology result from the combination of quantum optics on one side with the most recent and advanced nanofabrication techniques on the other. A good part of our work consists in designing nanophotonic circuits which can generate, manipulate and eventually detect single photons on a chip. We rely on external photonic foundries or close collaborators like Fondazione Bruno Kessler for the fabrication of the photonic chips that once we receive we can test and uh, use to perform the suited measurements in our laboratories. These circuits have to be able to create, transform, process and measure our photonic qubits following a scheme like the one showed in this uh, slide. The goal will be to succeed in measuring some sort of quantum interference that would represent a step further toward photonic quantum computation. In this sense, we are currently working on a collaborative European project called EPICUS, led by our close collaborators at Fondazione Bruno Kessler, whose aim is that of realizing an integrated photonic quantum simulator, controlled electronically and capable of solving a small quantum problem. Coherent superposition and indistinguishability are also core concepts for quantum entanglement which is a concept of utmost importance both at the fundamental level in quantum physics as well as at the level of quantum technologies, which are nowadays under intense development. Here, the observation of another sort of quantum interference can be taken as the best source that nature can offer of both randomness and security, two highly demanded requirements in our era of digital communications. 
In this regard, we have been working on an experimental setup on an optical table where the entanglement between the propagation direction and the polarization of single photons is first generated, then transformed via deterministic and reversible rotation operations, and finally measured via projective measurements. We exploit this entanglement for generating quantum random numbers from the measurement outcomes of the single photon detection events, as shown in this animation. This work is now being translated in a nanophotonic circuit integrated on a tiny chip that could be embedded in a portable device one day. Further developments of this work include the application of the fundamental quantum properties of light to the world of cryptographic and secured communications, a subject on which a startup company initiative will soon take off from our laboratory. To conclude, I just would like to mention that uh, 2D materials, this particularly new class of materials like graphene, have already been shown to be particularly promising in terms of optoelectronic properties and thus interesting for future photonic circuits. We do not have any local activity on the subject at the moment, but we have an ongoing collaboration with the University of Strasbourg, where there is a group specialized in these materials, and we also have plans to work on this here in the future. If you are also fascinated by nano-optics and quantum mechanics, and you want to pursue your studies in these exciting fields, do not hesitate to contact us to know more about what we do. Another research line of the Nanoscience Laboratory is about the synthesis and characterization of nanomaterials. We are currently working on the recovery of high added values products from agriculture and food industry residuals. In particular, cellulose-based nanomaterials are an important source from which a broad spectrum of functional biomaterials can be obtained. Despite being known from thousands of years, Cellulose is still an active research field for the peculiar physico-chemical properties of its crystalline building blocks, the cellulose nanocrystals. At Nanoscience Laboratory, we are investigating the possibilities to use these raw resources to create smart and active materials that span application from mechanical actuators to self-propelled agents. Furthermore, we exploit self-assembling and templating strategies to fabricate piezo and triboelectric generators, as well as flexible optoelectronic devices. Finally, by matching the expertise we had on optical sensing and nanostructure characterization, we exploit the biophysical knowledge of natural resources to design and fabricate advanced biomaterial to be used, for example, as drug delivery systems or supporting substrate for cellular cultures. Now that you I've got to know what nanophotonics and nanomaterials are, so the kind of activity we are doing. So I would like to introduce you the, the possible uh, uh, study plan that you can undertake. So according to the manifest of study, so you are supposed to be, but in your master degree, you are supposed to be at least 13 exams. And so what I'm suggesting here is that we try divide by dividing to four semesters. In red, I underline those courses that are characterizing the, the nanophotonic structure. And uh, while the others are uh, optional courses that you can choose. So let me start discussing what could be your first semester. So here I'm supposing that you will be either four or five exams. So you have the two mandatory exams of experimental matrix and quantum mechanics. And then you could become either a, a solid state physics or atomic physics. Then you are, uh, uh, if you still have time left, then you are a field that you are, have to study. Five exam in your first semester, you can also take statistical mechanics, which is a fundamental course at the basis of the phenomena we are discussing. Then, in the second semester, you have the laboratory course for an experimentalist of experimental physics, and then you have the first characterizing courses, course of the uh, nanophotonic structure, the use of electronics. Then, the 
depending whether you are more interested to quantum photonics or to uh, uh, narrow market photonics or classical photonics, either you choose uh, quantum optics and quantum computing, and here you need, for example, experimental physics, optical forms, quantum optics, and quantum computing, or you can select the uh, condensing matter physics and computational physics. In this way, you may, for example, as well, experimental physics, optical forms, condensing matter theory, and computational physics. Then, in the first semester, you will have photonics, laboratory, and advanced photonics. Nanoscience, laboratory of advanced electronics. In this way, you can make a for example. If you are less interested in uh, advanced electronics or less interested in material science, you can select instead of nanoscience or instead of laboratory of advanced electronics any course that you are interested in. So, those are uh, selective courses that you can. Uh, and select based on your own personal interest. And then for the fourth semester, so at the end of the second year, you can take your thesis and you can turn to the nanoscience lab to do your own work. Here, so this is the study plan we are suggesting. And now let us see some example of uh, master thesis work done within the nanoscience lab. Um, <clears throat> here, uh, uh, there are pieces on integrated classical photonics, where, for example, Filippo here is doing a thesis on the topological effects in normal medium photonics. Or here, we have thesis on integrated quantum photonics, where, for example, Davide now is doing a thesis on undetected photon quantum spectroscopy. And here uh, there is the uh, uh, thesis then on neuromorphic photonics, where uh, um, Marco is doing a thesis on fit for one neural networks. So in, in the past and in the, uh, also now, so we are also offering a, a, a project uh, uh, to be performed within companies. And uh, for example, and we had a, a student that went to Optic Electronics in Italy to do a thesis on the development of thermal devices for screen, with screening. And uh, other kind of uh, uh, thesis work were offered on nanomaterials, where we had students that did a thesis on nanochild cellulose functionalized silicon surfaces or uh, the use of polymer templates for uh, that delivery application. So this is more or less the end of the presentation of the nanophotonic uh, track. And if you are interested and you want to discuss with us, so here there are the email of Professor Dutotti, Professor Alcini, Professor Sescata, and of myself. So you are more than welcome to ask.